No, when the gospel is traveling, I mean, praise the Lord. I'm talking about a gospel that's on the move, a gospel that is not staying put, but a gospel that is traveling, that is spreading, that is reaching people, amen, who otherwise would have not known Jesus. I'm talking about somebody's testimony in here, a gospel that came and found you when you weren't looking for the gospel. I'm talking about a God that came and rescued you and saved you when you were not looking for him. I'm talking about a person who was not in church when Jesus came and touched your heart. I'm talking about somebody who was actually potentially living in sin, but somehow this God of the universe came and found you where you were. A gospel on the move, a savior on the move, a message on the move, a, a nomadic people, Sister Mickey said that, that our, our people group once were the, the people of Tepang, and, and now they're, they're not moving, but because they've stopped moving, it gives us the opportunity to start moving. And the gospel is going to catch them and meet them right where this excites me. So as Sister Mickey was sharing his testimony with us during staff time, I said, Sister Mickey, I actually want you to, to hold that thought. Because a people who would travel is a great place to pick up our text for today. A people who are on the move, movement in itself is a great place to pick up our text. A nomadic people, it means the people who were actually traveling some. I encourage you today to listen for your 3%. Listen for the 3% of today's message that the Lord would have you to take home. There's a lot in this, but we're going to get it in, I believe, in about 30 minutes. Is that all right? Amen. If, is that all right? Uh, <laughs> Sister said, I can't wait. My Lord, listen, listen, don't, don't, join, don't join Pastor Trey. He's been trying to push me since early this morning. He, he's, he, the, 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 the worship team and the spirit of the living God has just been here. And so I'm excited about this, this word. I really am excited about this word. So I just ask that you would just pray and listen for the 3% that the Holy Spirit would have for you to, to take and, and lay in your heart today. Amen? Amen? Amen. The gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter, verses 34 through 43. The gospel according to Luke, that's chapter 18, Verses 34 through 43. It's a movement. Sorry, 35. I'm going to jump right ahead. 35, verse 35 is where we're going to start. Verse 35. New International Version is what we'll be reading from. Scripture will be on the outside screens for those of you without your Bibles. The Gospel according to Luke, the 18th chapter, verse 35. These words were left on record. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked, what was happening? Verse 37, they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And so he called out, Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. And those who led the way, they rebuked him. And they told him, be quiet. But instead of being quiet, he shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Then Jesus stopped in verse 40 and he ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, what would you want me to do? And the beggar's response, Sister Joyce, was, I want to see. And verse 42 says, 
And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Verse 43, and our, our final verse for this morning. Immediately he received his sight and he followed Jesus, praising God. And when all the people saw it, they also praised God. Hallelujah, Joshua. If ain't nobody listening, Brother Joshua is listening this morning. Uh-uh. Only take him out if you want to, Sister Talon. He's not interrupting nothing. Amen. He might be trying to help somebody release their praise in this place. Out of the mouth of babes. Hallelujah. Last week as a church, City of Light, we were in Capernaum. This week we're shifting our geographical location to Jericho. Now, for you history buffs, Jericho was during the Old Testament an ancient city known for its great walls, a city only 15 miles northeast of Jerusalem. So it wouldn't have been uncommon. There it, good, there it is. Come on. <laughs> so you know what? Since the mic turned off as we were talking about Jericho, it just leads me to believe that Jericho nor Capernaum is what we're going to focus on this morning. But what I'd like to use for a thought this morning for the next 27, 28 minutes is the noise on the road. I want to use for a thought this morning, just this title. The Noise on the Road. It's been an interesting two weeks of travel for the Shazers. As we talk about the Tepang people and, 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 and how nomadic they were, for those of you that know the Shazers, you realize that we're a pretty nomadic family too. We do quite a bit of traveling, amen, and quite a bit of moving, and so it's been a interesting couple weeks. First, Anasa goes to Buffalo, where she graduated from college, to celebrate a friend's birthday. And while driving there, thank you, bro, while driving there, she hears some noise on the road. And she recognizes that the noise is coming from no place other than her car. So she takes a moment to pull over and she calls us and we encourage her to take it and get it checked out. She takes her car and she gets it checked out and she finds out that it's her heat shield and that it came off and it was rubbing against something under her car. Can somebody just say thank you God for your protection and your provision. So we thank God that it turned out okay but for Anasa it was the noise on the road that got her attention. It was the noise on the road that alerted her that something could be getting ready to happen. She couldn't see it, but she certainly heard it. Then only a couple days later, Carmi and I were traveling out to Poughkeepsie to drop off Zaria at school. And we get about one hour and 45 minutes up the road. It was about, about 40 miles past Binghamton, and we too, hear some noise on the road. I turn down the radio and I say, Carmi, what is that noise? I can't figure it out. Carmi can't figure it out. And if anybody knows Zaria, you know exactly what she was doing. What? Sleeping. So she's no help in figuring it out. So we keep on driving and we're enjoying the beautiful scenery in Dutchess County and I keep hearing this noise on the road. I keep traveling, Pastor Trey, but when I turn the wheel a certain way, the noise gets a little bit louder. I can't see it, but I can certainly hear it. Eventually what happens, for those of mechanics in the house, you probably already know, our wheel bearing bursts. And thank you, Jesus, we too were able to get it fixed. 
But for today, I want to talk about the noise on the road. Because in all three cases, for Bartimaeus, for Anasa, and for Connie and I, it was the noise on the road. Let's examine our text. The primary person in today's text is called Bartimaeus in the gospel according to Mark chapter 10. And we find Bartimaeus here in Luke, blind, James, and begging. How many of you remember where he was doing his blind begging at? Where, where was he doing it at, Sid? On the side of the road, on the roadside. So check this out. This is important to catch this. It would be a likely conclusion that because Bartimaeus' eyes didn't work, it would have prevented him from being able to work. Listen. So because his sight was broken, it led to him being bro broken. His eyes didn't work, so he couldn't work, Brother Harold. And it left him in a position where he was blind and begging. Can somebody say that's just a tough position? That's a tough position. But in this year of 2020, can I share with you just thing? I want to share with you just one thing Bartimaeus wasn't. What he wasn't was a quitter. He wasn't willing to give up. Yes, life was tough for him. But if we could be completely honest this morning, sometimes when life is the toughest, that's when we pray the loudest. Sometimes it's the tough situations that lead us into the deeper places in the Lord. So back to this blind beggar. As he's sitting there blind and begging, he hears some noise on the road, some commotion of sorts, and he wonders what it is. Verse 36 says, when he heard the crowd going by, the noise on the road, he asked what was happening. So look, because of his inability to see, the blind beggar had to listen in order to learn. I'm going to say that again. Because of his inability to see, the blind beggar, Brother Larry, had to listen in order to to learn, which would mean he have already learned to listen. Somebody just got all confused. Because of his inability to see, he had to listen in order to learn, which means that he would have already learned to listen. Listen, City of Light, we don't often listen to learn. Instead, you and I listen to respond. But because he couldn't see, he had no choice but to listen and to become proficient at it. If I can be honest with you this morning, they told me church is a pretty good place to start. I believe I spent more time looking than listening during this pandemic. And because I did so, it tried to rattle my faith on more than one occasion. Seeing can sometimes mess you up. It was more than a year ago we talked about this topic. And so this pandemic came and everything that came with it tried to shake my faith because of all that I was seeing. But Sadrina, does our Bible not say that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the very word of God? If I stand correct before you this morning, the earth as it was formed on its axis was formed because it had to obey what it heard. The stars were hung in the sky one by one because they had to obey what they heard. Animals and plants alike were formed because they had to obey what they heard. The impure spirit last week had to flee because it had no choice except to obey what it heard. I know too many people with 2020 vision that might benefit this season from just closing their eyes. I know too many folks with perfect vision that might actually benefit more this season by just closing their eyes. 
Brother Bartimaeus, because he couldn't see, he was never discouraged by what we see. Because Bartimaeus couldn't see, he was never discouraged by the things you and I see. But instead, he was encouraged by what he heard. And, 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 listen, I've met some folks, Brother James, who thought they seen something, and so now they think they know something. I know some people who thought they seen something, so now they believe they know something. We've got to learn to listen and listen to learn. Part of man says, what's that noise? <laughs> Anasa asked me, Dad, what's that noise? I asked Carmi, what's that noise? Bartimaeus asked the crowd, he says, what's that noise? Verse 37, they told him exactly what it was. We're getting ready to walk out of here. In verse 37, they said, it's Jesus of Nazareth passing by. Look, look, look. Bartimaeus said, what's all that noise? He heard something, and he, he wanted to know what it is it that he heard, and the people around him said, it's Jesus of Nazareth that passes by. I don't know what you guys are waiting for, but the text said that it was Jesus. Listen, this is Jesus, the king of the world, who's passing by. Jesus, the only one who is able, is passing by. Jesus Christ, the very prince of peace, is passing by. Jesus, the ultimate healer, is passing by. Jesus, the Lamb of God, is passing by. Jesus, the light of the world, Brother Rick, is passing by. Jesus, the only one who can do anything except for fail, is right near my situation. And seeing that Jesus is right here within shouting distance. This ought to be a good place for somebody to. Go ahead and stay quiet if you want to. I'm going to follow Bartimaeus. Maybe you don't have any situations that you need Jesus to walk through. Maybe ain't nothing going on in your life that you need Jesus to walk by. But you keep sitting there, and, and that's okay. But Bartimaeus won't let this moment pass him by. Right at this moment, Sister Joyce, Bartimaeus has a decision to make. He can do whatever he can to get Jesus' attention, or he can sit in his situation and stay broke and broke. Pastor Trey, he's on the borderline. Sister Joyce, he's in a peculiar position. He's sitting there on the borderline. I, I know this might get me put out of the church, but I'm reminded of a song from like 1983 by a dear sister named Madonna. And she wrote, penned these words. She said, you keep on pushing my love over the borderline. I I'm going to remix that this morning and see for us as a church, what is it that will push our faith over the borderline? For, for Bartimaeus, he's in a peculiar position here. And, 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 and come on, Brother James, don't leave. He, he's about to take a step over the borderline. He hears that, 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 that Jesus is, is, is nearby, and, 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 and he has an opportunity. He has this borderline in front of him. He can do what he can to get the attention of the Savior of the world, or he can sit in his situation and stay broke and broke. So he makes some noise on the road. <laughs> he shouts out, Elder Parks, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, now mind you, uh, 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 Howard, he's never seen Jesus, so how could he know about his mercy? <laughs> Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I believe this morning in my sanctified mind that he must have heard that Jesus was full of mercy and full of grace. I believe in my sanctified mind this morning that it was on the testimony of Jesus that pushed his faith over the borderline. Listen, listen. I don't know what you got to do this morning, God, but whatever it is, keep on pushing my faith over the borderline. Listen, listen. And then in verse 39, it says, those who led the way, 
they rebuked him, Brother James, and they told him to be quiet. But he shouted the more louder. Have mercy on me. Listen, listen. These are the people in our life, I believe, in the text. These are the folks in your life that when you start shouting, these are the folks that are around your life that when you start crying, these are the people in your life that say that when you start praying and when you start praising, they tell you it don't take all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. These are those people that, 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 that sit around you and they say that I, I know you might be going through something but I hope you would be quiet because they, they simply don't think it takes all that. Can I just stop by this morning or this afternoon to tell you that these are the people that simply don't know what you're going through. They don't know what you're going through. They don't, they, they don't know what you've been through. So, so the haters that are around him, they tell Bartimaeus, hush. The people around you that think it doesn't take all of that, those are the people that don't know what it's like. They don't know what your life is like. They don't know what you go through at home. They don't know the shoes you had to walk in. They just want Bartimaeus to pipe down and cease this behavior. The ones who really don't know what Bartimaeus has gone through but yet they want to give him advice on how he is to handle his worship. I want you to notice this morning one thing Bartimaeus doesn't do. Uh, one thing in this year of the one that he has no time for, he has no time to even respond to the opinions. It's, it's right here. It's in the text. It's in the text. We, we talked about it on Thursday. It's in the text. He has no time to respond. He doesn't respond to them at all in verbiage. What he actually does, Brother James, is he starts to praise a little louder. Instead of responding to the opinions of all of the haters, he simply decides, I'm going to shout a little bit louder. I'm going to make a little bit noise on the road. And it was because of this very noise. Verse 40, we're going home. It's because of the very noise that he made that Jesus decides to stop. It's because of his noise that Jesus decides to stop. And, and then when he does it, he orders the man to be brought to him. <laughs> he tells the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him a question. But, but I don't want to go there first. I want to make sure we catch this, this bit of insight. Because of the noise that he made on the road, Sister Julie... Jesus stopped, and, and verse 40 says, he ordered, he actually commanded the man to be brought to him. Listen to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep, somebody already caught it. He gives a command that Bartimaeus be brought to him, and I believe if Bartimaeus were right here, and if he could speak, he might say something like this to me, Jeremiah. He might say, but wait a minute, who's going to bring me to Jesus? Because the only ones around me are the same ones who hushed me. I believe if Bartimaeus was right here, Anthony, I believe we would have a conversation, something like this. He would say, wait a minute, the only ones around me to bring me are the ones that just tried to hinder me. Oh, Sister Wilhelmina, wouldn't it be funny if the same folk who tried to hate on you would be the very ones he used to help you get closer to him? Oh, 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 so, somebody's almost there. Somebody, yeah, yeah, give her a kiss, Teddy, give her a kiss. T tell her this word is for her. Listen, wouldn't it be funny this morning if the same folk who tried to hate on you would be the very ones God used to help get you closer to him? Wouldn't it be funny this morning? Wouldn't it be funny this morning, Zaria, if the relationship that had gone bad actually helped lead you to him? Wouldn't it be funny this morning, Pastor Jeff, if the same diagnosis that tried to harm you actually led you closer to him? <laughs> Sometimes God will use the very people around you to bring you closer to him. I know that there are certain people who really get on your very last nerve, but maybe that's what led you here this morning. C come on, come on, come on. We're getting ready to get out of here. The same no good issue that tried to take your life could be actually what led you here this morning. City of Light, the same pandemic that tried to silence the church would be eventually used to strengthen the church. So, so now that we're here, now that we're here, 
now that Bartimaeus has made enough noise to get the attention of the Savior of the world, what if we as a church, what if we as a city made enough noise to get the attention of the Savior of the world? What if we got his attention? What if right now we have Jesus' attention? And what if he shows up and he asks us the same exact question he asked Bartimaeus? What if we made enough noise that we could cause the Savior of the world to stop and he asked us the same thing he asked Bartimaeus in verse 41? He asked, what do you want me to do for you? Oh, some, 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 somebody ought to be receiving right now. What if we've made enough noise? What if we made enough noise? What if in the midst of being told to shut up in silence, City of Light has made enough noise that the Savior said, I see you and you've stopped me and now I want to know what do you want me to do for you? Now, now, it's important as we get ready to close out to realize who's asking this question. This is the same Jesus whose resurrection we celebrated three weeks ago. He's here today, and what if he's asking you this one all-too-important question? What do you want me to do for you? Now, I'm not going to tell you what I think you should ask for this morning, but I will tell you that I believe there's something powerful in the beggar's request. I believe that when Jesus came before this beggar, he said, what do you want me to do for you? And then the next verse you'll realize the beggar has a response. I'm not going to tell you what to ask for this morning, but I'm telling you there's something powerful. He says, what do you want me to do for you? And look at what the beggar says. We got to catch this as we walk out of here. He says, Lord, I want to see. I believe there's something powerful in the beggar's respect. He asked to see, Brother Howard. Pastor Trey, he asked if he could see. Because I believe that there's something powerful in this area because I'm seeing with my spiritual heart that, that, that the blind beggar is asking this request, Eileen, because he realizes if he could just see, everything else would begin to change. He, he, but listen, remember because he couldn't see and his eyes were broke, that resulted in him being broke. And so he's not asking for finances, he's asking for sight because he believes if he could see, then that would fix the other stuff. He's asking Pastor Trey for sight. He's saying, I just want to see. There's something so powerful in this statement. Brother George, he says, I just want to see. I believe there's something powerful in this, Pastor Trey, because I believe if we as a church could just see that Jesus is at work in our situation. He's asking to see. He's not asking for any monetary things. He's not asking for a full church or a mega ministry. He's not asking for finances or resources. He's asking if I could just see. Because I believe that if we could just see that his heart is for us. I believe if we could just clearly see that even when we're not doing anything, he's at work. I believe that if we could just see that, Jesus, you are worth more than anything, things would begin to change. I believe, Sister Mickey, if we could just see that he's sitting high and he's looking low and he cares about us and he cares about our hearts. I believe if we could just see him in all of his splendor and all of his glory. I believe if we could just see him in the power of his might. I believe if we could just see him making a way out of no way. I'm going to invite our prayer team up, Pastor Trey up, and our altar workers, amen. Maybe you just want to see Jesus. Maybe you want to be more connected. Maybe you want to see how we're shining in this city. Maybe you just want to simply believe that when you can't see it, he's working that he never stops. He never stops working. But I, I want to ask you this morning, if we've made enough noise to get his attention and he shows up and he asks you this one question, what, Sydney, do you want me to do for you? What is our request? And I said, what is it that you want me to do for you? Shavala, Jesus shows up and says, what is it that you want me to do for you? 
What's our response? The beggar said, I just, I just want to see. I just want to see. There's something powerful and profound in that. I just want to see. I just want to see. I just want to open up the altars, amen. As Pastor Trey closes us out, we just want to open up the altars now. Maybe you just want somebody to stand with you and, and, and pray with you about the thing that is on your heart thing that you're waiting to see. There, there, there's, this, is, this is a powerful word. I'm telling you, this thing has had me for, for a week and a half. It's been ministering to me. And so I couldn't hold it. I had to share. I had to share. There's so much in here, amen, and, and, and not to, to, to hold on to it all, but what did he say to your heart? What's he speaking to you? What's he saying to you? The Savior of the whole world has stopped because of the noise on the road. And he said, what do you want me to do for you? Come on, Pastor Trey. And let no one stand in that way. Jesus, I'm coming to you. Here's where I am. This is what I desire. I see that can happen in you. Let no one stand in your way. King David was the ruler of an entire nation. And there's something I see in blind Bartimaeus blind Bartimaeus that I see throughout history, people who are recorded that walked in deep faith and connection to God and experienced encounters because they actually knew who he was. David danced undignified for those who may not know. King of an entire nation was caught dancing in his own space in a see-through sheer outfit that a woman saw him dancing in and despised him for it. David didn't care about what she thought because he knew the God he was dancing before. It wasn't her business. It was David's business before God that he was taking care of. Jesus teaches in the, in, in the New Testament as he's walking and changing the entire culture by introducing the new kingdom. Teaches, he says, for those who come after God and they do this thing, ask him, seek after God, and knock on the door of his heart. He will respond to them. Jesus is highlighting, acknowledging who God is and therefore receiving from him because of who he is. Blind Bartimaeus heard about Jesus already. He must have. Once he heard the people tell him that Jesus, the son of, Na uh, Jesus of Nazareth was there, his response was to now ask for healing. He knew somehow already who Jesus was.